Hello, everyone. This is Christy with AG Takes Over. Glad you're here. Um, for those of you who watched my AG Tuber goals for 2024 um, a couple months ago, I had outlined four very concrete goals. I'm giving you an update on how one slash two of them are going so far. So um, I was my plan was to wait and do this video like at the very end of the year. But I'm kind of kicking butt and A, I'm proud of it and excited and want to share things with you. And B, the sooner I post these videos, um, the sooner I can shout out the channels that deserve a lot of credit. So um, this will make sense in a second. So one of my goals was to make at least four polymer clay doll sized foods for my dolls this year. I've had never worked with polymer clay in my life. I asked for some basic supplies for Christmas and got them and was kind of daunted by um, taking on polymer clay stuff. So I had asked some of you um, which channels you recommend, what basic, what kind of like what are the core supplies that I need. And I took everybody's advice to heart and um, got all my stuff set up. At the very end of January, I was like, all right, it's time to do this. So I said, I'm just going to set a goal of four. If I can surpass that, great. But at least that feels really, really manageable. And then another thing that was related to kind of crafting, doll-related crafts, was I wanted to do at least 12 other AG Tubers tutorials. Because a lot of times I watch these amazing videos that people take the time and invest their creativity in putting out. And I go, that's so cool. Thank you for sharing. I would love to do this. And then I don't follow through. So I have prioritized following through. And let me tell you, the results are so worth it. Um, I have accomplished the four polymer clay doll foods. You'll see them all in this video. And I am almost at 12 um, other AG Tubers tutorials, but I am at 12 crafts. So I'm just going to share 12 things that I've made with you. And by the way, I post at least once a week, very consistently, not because I feel like I owe that to everybody, but just because I have a lot of ideas and I'm really enjoying prioritizing some time just for me to have a creative outlet. And you also seem to be enjoying it too. So win-win. If you have never been to my channel before, feel free to check out some more videos. And if you like them, click the subscribe button. If you click on the notification bell, you will get a notice anytime that I post a video, which is at least once a week, usually more than that. All right, let's dive in. Here's the format I'm following, by the way. I'll number the craft. I'll tell you which creator um, made this. I will link every video that I followed a tutorial for in the description. I highly encourage you to check them out if you're so inspired. And I will tell you the date I completed it. I'm probably going to keep this a running thing and give you a grand total at the end of the year. So first thing was my very first polymer clay tu um, tutorial ever, my very first polymer clay food. Joanne's 18-inch dolls had come highly recommended from other people who do doll-related crafts, and I checked out a couple of her videos and went, yep, I see why this is the case. And honest to goodness, I don't know how she doesn't have more subscribers. I don't know how she is not getting more attention. I really wanted to make this video in large part to shout her out. I hope that you will check out her channel. The tutorials are amazing. And it's one thing for me to follow them correctly. It's another for her to create them, to like come up with the ideas and make sure that the scale is right and test the different approaches and give you the best option, right? Fantastic. Cannot recommend her channel enough. So here are my cute little Pop-Tarts right next to my Pop-Tarts. I was so excited. I was so proud. I was showing, and this is still the case, like anybody who comes over, I am like, hey, look what I made. I made these little Pop-Tarts. I put icing on them. I think three out of the four, maybe, or maybe I, I don't know. I think I made one without icing, but um I eat them without icing because I'm vegetarian and the frosted ones usually have gelatin in them. So here are some, some more pictures of them. I had a slight variation. I didn't have all of the products that she recommended on hand. So um, 
And when I look back at these, I'm like, eh, they're not, you know, I could have done, I probably would have done better now, but I don't care. I love them. I'm going to be so proud of them forever. Fun facts. If you have the My Life as Kitchen set, um, the like kitchen appliances set, and you make this, you follow this tutorial, then they will fit in your little toaster. Also, if you collect the mini brands and you have come across the little Pop-Tarts box, you could also probably find a tutorial for this. But if you have the mini brands one, um, it is a perfect fit. Look, you can get three of them in there. They're not little foil things, right? But whatever. <laughs> Don't expect perfection. And here is a picture showing them to scale. So I would say this was a very beginner-friendly project. I completely have faith in you. You could do this. You could do this. Craft number two is from AGTV for Life. I didn't make this until January 31st, so way overdue for making poinsettias. But this was a really easy project. I spent about $2.50 on it, I think. If that, I can't remember if I bought one little bunch of poinsettias from the Dollar Tree or two, but everything else I had on hand. Um, I added ribbon. Those weren't in her tutorial, but this was super beginner friendly, really easy to do. It will add a touch of authenticity to your Christmas decorations if you have a dollhouse. And if you were just trying to make some props like on the cheap beginner level for doing doll photography, it would also be a great option. Again, video will be linked in the description. You can do this. It'll be fun. You'll be proud of yourself. Next one was from Michelle's House of Miniatures. And I'm counting this as two different crafts. So it's craft three and craft four. She included them in one video. So there'll just be one link for this. But the first one was French toast. I love this. I ended up using glue and a little bit of, I think she had recommended yellow food coloring to make the syrup, but I couldn't find our yellow, yellow food coloring. So I used glue and some vanilla extract, which made it have a nice color, but also temporarily at least made them smell really good. And I made a whole bunch of extra butter pats while I was at it because I figured if I had already made the clay and had it out, I might as well make several butter pats and then I can put them on anything I want. My only complaint about this is not a complaint about the tutorial. It's in my execution was the powdered sugar. It looks a little bit paint splattery in spots. So it doesn't read as powdered sugar, but that's a me thing. If I had to do it over again, I probably would do a better job executing it. And I only put the powdered sugar on one side. So if you flip them over, you just see like you know, kind of the crispiness of the French toast. And I like that. I like that it's versatile, so you can flip them either way. Next up is the fourth one, also from Michelle's House of Miniatures, pancakes. It was just a breakfast food kind of video. So here are my pancakes. Um, because the syrup had glue in it, if you want these to stick together, just put a little syrup in the middle or let it drizzle all the way over one pancake onto the next one. And it created kind of a stuck together stack. So one of my pancake sets is stuck together. And the other one, I made a point not to do that. So I have two separate flapjacks. Again, lots of pats of butter. This was really easy. It doesn't need to be perfect. It's cute. The dolls told me they approve. So that's good enough for me. The fifth craft I have made from other AG tubers this year actually got completed on Valentine's Day. And if I remember correctly, it's from like a year ago. Maybe Emma at AG Dollies Forever even did this as a Valentine's Day craft last year. I can't recall. But check these out. My daughter was even able to help me and she's four. So you got this. These are actually hair rollers. So we made two and we made two sizes. We did the jumbo or like larger hair rollers to make these jelly rolls. And then we did smaller ones. The, this one was already pink, but we just painted over it pink. It's got some chocolate drizzle. I cheated and put a little like earring, like a little piece of jewelry as the strawberry, but I just wanted a little accent something. And it's got some little sprinkles on it. 
Here's the chocolate one. My four-year-old painted this. Like, she just did the brown paint. Granted, I did the rest of it, and she woke up and went, oh my gosh, it's all done. But yeah, these were so cute, and she was so proud of herself. Love it. Number six, got a little asterisk here because it is technically not an AGTubers tutorial, but when my wife and I hosted a meetup prior to the closing of the American Girl Columbus store, we... Um, we took some things to give away and some people brought things to give away. Somebody brought different like paper cut out things that you could turn into crafts. So they said, I didn't put them all together because they would have gotten smushed, but you can put them together. And some of them were a bit complicated. <laughs> and then there was this one and it was just a rectangle and the sizing was right. And it's in French on one side and in English on the other. And they're just, you know, French butter cookies. So I've got a picture of them here. Um, next to the doll's hand for scale and then next to our jelly rolls and some other goodies my pancakes in the background there on the right easy things don't need to be hard and you look at them and you start seeing like your collection has little bits of things that you've made throughout it which is really cool speaking of this next one is not from anybody's tutorial I some of you know that I got pieces of the Chinese New Year outfit a while back and then I went ahead and bought the pants and the top shirt part recently and I the thing that I was missing was a mallet for the gong and I have a friend who has it and she sent me pictures and I went oh I thought it was just like a clear like a, a round thing at the end and it turns out it's like it almost looks, it's rubber maybe, but it looks like yarn twisted around. And I don't know if I can do that, but I figured I could try my hand at something that's similar enough. And so here's what I have. This is like a cake pop stick that I colored a light brown color, and maybe with chalk, I don't even remember. I drilled a teeny tiny hole through one end and um, twisted some embroidery floss and made a handle for it. And then I painted a black bead red and just put a little drop of glue on it, stuck it on the end. And you see the side by side. This looks pretty good. Like this is legit enough for me. If I happen to come across that thing in a lot that I buy or something, I'll keep the actual one. But until then, I feel like this is complete. Like I'm totally happy with this. Sometimes you don't even need a tutorial. You just need your own creativity. Okay, but then sometimes you straight up need a tutorial. This one is probably the one that I'm most proud of. I don't know, or it's at least where I started getting consistently like geeked out. Joanne's 18 inch dolls for the win again. I'm not even kidding you. If you, even if you know that you won't do any of these crafts, like shout this woman out, share links to her posts. Um, just play them in the background so that she racks up some views like she these tutorials are phenomenal I cannot overstate that um, some of them take a, a lot longer the first one I did if you recall was the pop tarts one trail mix <laughs> there was a lot of pieces to this but check it out <gasps> they look so good there are cashews peanuts M&Ms and raisins. I think that was it. There are whole peanuts and half peanuts. And yeah, I, <laughs> I sent a picture of this to my daughter, um, the older daughter. And she was like, initially, I was like, why is my mom sending me pictures of her snack? And then I had to like zoom in a lot and put two and two together. And knowing you, I figured it out that this might be doll food. And then I sent her a picture of the little tiny bowl in my hand. And she was like, shut up. This is insane. And it is. This was a lot more involved. I did this over like two or three evenings, but I am absolutely over the moon with it. And I did something a little bit different with the raisins than she did just because I didn't have the exact paint color she recommended. And she recommended a translucent clay that I didn't have. So I worked with what I had and I'm thrilled with the results. I think so much of what AG makes is like clumps of stuff together, but to have loose, like 
I don't know, you could do a photo scene where somebody's picking out all the blue M&Ms because that's the ones they like best or somebody doesn't like the raisins. There's so many possibilities. So many possibilities. It looks so good. Okay, next is a tutorial from somebody that I watch regularly and I always go, one day I'm going to do some of their tutorials and then I never do. So I recently did a tutorial from Always Dolls, finally. And this was kind of like a three in one. So check it out. The thing that I came up with on my own was the card. But all three of the other things are things that they showed in their tutorial. So there's a reed diffuser, a candle, and some soaps. And the soaps that they made were hearts. The color scheme was different. You know, I was just working with what I had. They had a hole punch and they cut out like a gajillion pieces of paper and stacked them to make the soaps. That was maybe not the the most time efficient way to go about it. But I'm not sure I have a better suggestion. I guess if you had like foam and you could just cut out your shapes and then paint them, that might be easier. This is super cute. Um... I don't know that everybody's going to put it in a container and actually briefly light it, but I wanted the wicks to be burned and I wanted to get that like authentic looking, the wax is pulling and you know, where it looks different after you've lit the candle, not just the wick piece, but the wax itself. So I just lit them briefly and then I blew it out. So I didn't catch anything on fire. So number 10, back to a tough one. This was a Joanne's 18 inch dolls one. Um, I did this all in one night and it was five and a half hours. This was the first time I actually kept track. So five and a half hours worth of work. Want to see what I have to show for it? This is totally worth it. Totally worth it. So there's the dark, like the wheat checks or whatever. There's the corn or rice, whatever the lighter colored one is. Um, The bagel, like the rye bagel chips, those little, um, they look like kind of twisty, or scalloped breadsticks, and then little pretzel circles and the square pretzels. They even have salt on them, just the pretzels. It's not real salt. You'll learn how to do it if you watch her video. And then here it is kind of to scale in the dollhouse. Again, just like the trail mix, the Chex mix is all these loose pieces. So that's what's so cool about it. And you can make like When she shows you how to make the little circle pretzels, you can make just a few kind of like serving for one, or you can say, I'm already doing the work. I'm going to make a whole bunch of them. I love that. I'm obsessed with this. I look at it and I'm like, I can't believe I did that. I just started working with polymer clay. This is why I'm saying I have faith in you. Like, I can't believe I did that. All right. Next one. I just did this. By the way, I'm filming this on March 12th. Goodness knows when you're going to see it, but I'm filming this on March 12th. So um, yesterday, literally last night, I went back to Michelle's house of miniatures and kind of looked through and went, what seems easy? (laughs) I kind of want to get through 12 of them so that I can shout out these channels. So what seemed easy was her hot fudge brownie tutorial. I changed up a couple of things. Um, Primarily, I used a different thing for the cherry and a different thing for the um, cherry stem. She used a bead and painted it bright red, or maybe she had a red bead. And then she had like a red, almost like a bread tie, like a bread bag, twisty tie, and stuck that down in the cherry bead hole. I did not have a red bead. So I got a little glass bead that I had and painted it with nail polish. I actually really liked this because it gave it that dark cherry look. And then I just found some floral wire out in the garage and cut a little piece and stuck that in to make the stem. Look at that. I showed somebody at work today and they thought it was real. That's like a proud moment for me. They're like, oh my gosh, my mouth started to water. They didn't know that I collect dolls. And they were like, oh, is that what you made for dessert last night? I was like, yeah, for my dolls. All right. And then this morning, I'm busy, killing it. AGT fee for life again. I'm telling you, this is the one that I watched nine months ago. And then finally this morning, I was I got around to actually making it. And I don't why I waited so long. These things are doable. Look at this. I got a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser and some Lysol Disinfectant Spray and some scrubber sponges. And here they are in front of some other, like I think our generation brand cleaning supplies. And if you want a sense of scale, 
because the Lysol is actually like wrapped around a chapstick container. And when I showed it to my wife by itself, she was like, that's a giant Lysol. And then I went and grabbed a can of some kind of cleaner. And I said, no, this is right. My, it, it's like my hand takes up a little less than half of the height of the, the canister. So yeah, I think this is excellent scale. And I know that um, many brands sometimes have little cleaning products, but they tend to be smaller than American Girl dolls would need. So I really appreciate that she has taken the time, created these printables, and walks you through step-by-step how to make some that actually do fit our dolls perfectly. And I spent no bucks on this one, like nothing, because I only used what I already had on hand. I didn't have the same color of sponge that she did, so I just used whatever I had. That's it. That is definitely not it for the year for me. I am on a roll. I'm thoroughly enjoying this. One of my other New Year's resolutions was to not buy too many dolls this year. And this is really helping because I'm staying occupied. I'm really enjoying working on adding more personalized things to my dolls collection instead of adding more dolls to my collection. Um, And I feel proud every time I look at these things. Yeah, I hope that you feel inspired to, at the very least, check out the videos and maybe pick some that feel up your alley. And if they're, you know, harder ones, do them when you have the time. Let it be over, you know, a multi-day process. If they're ones that seem easy enough and you have little ones in your lives, try to involve them. But yeah, let me know if you've done any of these, if you have any favorite tutorials, anything you want that's doll related, drop it in the comments below hope that you are having a wonderful day, that you've spent some time doing something just for you, maybe enjoying your dolls, maybe not. I will catch you very soon for my next video.